Habemus Papam. It is with these words, and from this balcony, that the successor to Benedict XVI will be announced, watched by the whole world and following the most secretive of elections. In order to make their decision, the cardinals gathered for the conclave will live in total isolation. They will be staying here in this guest house close to St Peter's Basilica. And twice a day, they will go this short distance to enter the Sistine Chapel. Conclave means with key. When the cardinals cross the square, one of the busiest in the Vatican, the traffic has to be stopped. There is also an electromagnetic system that blocks all mobile phones. The idea is that the cardinals can communicate with each other, but not with the outside world. The vote will be cast below Michelangelo's frescoes by secret ballot. According to Catholic doctrine, the election of a new pope is also a divine decision. Someone has to be chosen, perhaps by God, so we need to know who. We don't want an answer influenced by politics or pressure group. It's important to put oneself in a spiritual position. The conclave has this very spiritual dimension of shared prayer. There are 115 cardinal electors who can vote. One of them will be chosen, with at least a two-third majority. There are of course a few favourites, but the conclave tends to go against the predictions. Conservative or reformist, in the field or theologian. For the first time, the church could choose a non-European cardinal as pope. A pope from the south could be very conservative. I think the skin color or geographical origin are not important criteria to the cardinals. What's important is the caliber of the candidate. Will he act according to the Gospels? Can he cope in a crisis? Because as we've seen, the Catholic Church is subjected to numerous crises. The task facing the next pope will be immense. Numerous scandals have tainted the image of the Vatican, and in Europe, the church is in difficulty and Catholicism is in competition with other religions. Amongst the 1.2 billion Catholics, the expectations are varied and contradictory. I would prefer to have a, you know, a conservative pope, if you will. The fundamental teaching of Christ must be respected, that's obvious, but adapting to the demands of the times is also necessary. Before being presented to the world, the man chosen must accept the position and choose his papal name, and then put on his new robes. The papacy's accredited tailor has already prepared three sets of garments in three different sizes.